Okay, so I'm going to try to make this relatively brief. I want to speak a bit about the um, clashes in Chicago today, um, which have got attention for all the wrong reasons. Um, and not surprising that this has been occurring around a Donald Trump speech. Now, if you've been following my channel in recent weeks and months, you'll know that I'm very, very critical of Donald Trump. And I stand by everything I've said. I believe this man is playing some very dangerous games in terms of the reckless way in which he's just churning out generalizations of people, the sort of divisive rhetoric he's using. Um, it, it's deeply irresponsible. And um, all the controversy that surrounds him, or at least most of it, I think is justified because for the position that he's in and for the office that he is seeking, he is not acting presidential. But I do want to be fair when I talk about this. And I do feel that in the case of Chicago, and granted I'm saying this as an outsider, but based on the various things I've read, uh, looked into, and numerous different sources I've looked at, um, the, the so-called protesters are, on this occasion, were at fault because Trump hadn't even attended the rally. What had happened, from what I understand, is that the tensions were very high and local law enforcement advised him to cancel it. Now, there is a real problem in this. On one hand, without question, Donald Trump should be challenged. And without question, a lot of the tactics and the rhetoric his campaign has been using should come under scrutiny. But we're going to have a problem if it's a situation where the other side, i.e. those who hate Trump and who believe he's dangerous and so on, use exactly the same tactics. Now, it looks to me like the situation in Chicago today was the protesters stirring up trouble. In other words, they were going there solely to get into fistfights and stir up trouble. Um, of course, there's going to be Trump supporters that are you know, they would fight back, so to speak. I think, basically, the, my perspective on this now is that both sides are at fault. There has been examples of thuggery in Trump rallies. There was that footage of the guy being bed out and a 78-year-old Trump supporter just hit the guy point blank. Now, the fact that the candidate can't even bring himself to condemn that sort of stuff is very serious indeed, but... On the other hand, those sort of left-wing radical groups and organizations like Black Lives Matter, which is now a very disreputable organization, if they think going to a Trump rally to solely to stir things up and to yell things at Trump and so on, if they think that is productive, I think, I think they're misguided. Surely the best answer to this, if their contention is well, all the criticism of the approach that Donald Trump is taking, surely a more practical approach would be have a counter-rally. Get one of your leaders up to speak at a counter-event. Rather than just clashing, what's that going to achieve? All it's going to do is cause unrest, cause a lot of people to get arrested, people to get injured. It's, it's reckless. Um, it's a bit like a boxing match. If you get a very partisan crowd and two sides start fighting, um, it's not going to achieve anything. Now, I do understand the strength of feelings, um, for example, among uh, Hispanic people, among Muslims. I do understand that they feel they are under threat from Trump's rhetoric. So if I was Muslim or I was Hispanic, I would probably feel furious about the sort of language that Trump is using. But I don't think that's an excuse to to take away his freedom of speech. I mean, that's it feels almost uh, trivial to say that when we're talking about someone like Donald Trump, who is such a demagogue. Um, but in the end of the day, everyone has a right to free expression, including someone like Trump. So, I mean, consider this. I saw someone post this earlier. An Indian guy actually posted this question earlier. What if tomorrow uh, a bunch of unruly protesters 
went into a Hillary Clinton rally or a Bernie Sanders rally. Well, actually, there has been Black Lives Matter disruptions at Sanders rallies. But the point is, if they went in and they just wanted to yell at the candidate and and there was violence breaking out, would people automatically be saying, um, oh, they're, you know, they're victims or the candidate is entirely responsible for this? I do think Trump is partly responsible. But in the end of the day, people are responsible for their own actions. So if people are going to a Trump event solely, solely to cause trouble, they are at fault. Um, I mean, it's not going to achieve anything. It reminds me a bit of uh, when Nigel Farage, who's the leader of UKIP in the UK, went to Edinburgh. I forget what the event was. I think he was going to a pro-union rally or attempting to organise a pro-union rally. Well, basically, a bunch of left-wing thugs, and there's no other way to describe them, hounded him. Um, yelled in his face, surrounded him. It was pretty uh it was pretty fuggish behaviour. And at the time I remember feeling very angry about that. Not because I'm a UKIP supporter, I'm not. Um, you know, UKIP's far too right wing for me, but you don't win democratic arguments by saying this person is a fascist, therefore I am going to shout them down or I'm going to behave the same way as their supporters are behaving. Because then all that happens is you end up becoming as bad as the thing that you're protesting. So the way I see it is if these people feel that Donald Trump shouldn't be in Chicago, then hold a counter demonstration, hold a counter event where your leader is getting up and speaking and saying why Donald Trump is a problem. Now, there is another aspect to this. So, as someone has pointed out, why can Chicago not get a mass rally to protest against gangland killings? I think that's a legitimate enough question. You know, they're saying that Donald Trump is racist, but the likes of Black Lives Matter do next to nothing regarding reducing gang violence, reducing gang tensions. Um, so I'm very sceptical of Black Lives Matter as being a, a legitimate protest movement. I don't think they are. Um, I think they've lost that right as soon as they start polarising the public with their tactics. So I'll leave it there. Um, look, I, I am an outsider. I'm not in the US. And if I was among those people that Trump has been scapegoating, um, I, I too would feel very angry. So I'm not saying that people don't have a right to be angry, but I'm saying the way you go about something is very, very important. You can be angry with Trump without going to his rally solely to cause trouble. And I'm not ignoring the fact that there are Trump supporters who have been assaulting people and so on. I, I've seen that. But I do think to some extent, to some extent, the media has been slightly unfair on the Trump campaign. Um, and I'm only saying that not because I have any time for Donald Trump and not because I'm blind to the sort of rhetoric that he's been coming out with. I mean, you know, I've been making videos about it, but there has to be a fair analysis of this. And it's, I don't think it's fair to say that Donald Trump is responsible for everything that is going on. I do think he's partly responsible and to a large extent responsible because he's been stirring up division. He has. No one can honestly deny that. Um, you know, his supporters say, oh, he's just plain talking. He's just politically incorrect. But you have to take responsibility if you're a leader. Trump hasn't been doing that. Um but there is a real reason, I think, why he's getting all the support he's getting. His people have a perception, his supporters have a perception, that he is plain speaking and he doesn't care. Now, I think what needs to happen is people need to calm down. Because, to be honest, what I saw earlier reminded me of the big protests out the Dem outside the Democratic National Convention in 1968. Arguably, America is more divided than it has been for, I don't want to say a time, but for a very long time. And people just need to be responsible for their own actions. And people cannot blame victimhood for their own actions. That applies to both sides. It applies to Trump supporters and it applies to those who hate Donald Trump. Um, so I hope what I've been saying in this video comes across as, as reasonable. I hope what I'm saying comes across as level-headed because it's really, really a pity to see those scenes in Chicago.
I know Chicago's a tough place, but there are ways to go about things. And as the commentators said, that is a sad day for American democracy. Um, and it was a sad day for British democracy when those thugs attacked Nigel Farage. No matter how strongly you feel about someone, if you are using those sort of tactics, ultimately it's going to backfire. It certainly won't get what you want. 